You probably don't want a phone burning a literal hole in your pocket. Before we get into it, I can't thank you subscribers enough for all your great comments. This one's for you. Let's kick off Pro Tech Tips, a new series focused on how we can get the most out of our digital devices. Today's mobile revolution would not exist without the battery. Everything from Google Glasses to electric cars to the latest Boeing 787 Dreamliner rely on battery power. Truth is, battery innovation determines how far mobile technology can safely take us. There is a ton of great information out there, and I couldn't bear to squeeze it all into just one video, so I hope you're ready for at least three episodes covering the nature of rechargeable batteries, using good chargers, and things to do when your battery is dying. Basically, in the words of Daft Punk, how can we make our batteries all batteries store and release energy at the desired time and in a controlled manner. The first rechargeable lead battery appeared in 1859. Fifty years later, Waldmar Jungner, from Sweden, discovered that using nickel and cadmium resulted in a physically stronger and more chemically robust rechargeable battery. So Sweden began producing the first nickel-cadmium batteries, which eventually powered up everything from toys to satellites. But there was a problem. The memory effect really shortened the lifespan of these batteries. They gradually lost their maximum capacity, especially if they were repeatedly recharged after only a partial discharge. For these batteries, the best thing to do is to wait for the battery to die completely before recharging. And that can be annoying, especially when you want to get something done. On top of that, environmentalists in Europe began pressuring the industry to stop using cadmium because of its highly toxic nature. So with this focus on safety, Akira Yoshino and Sony introduced the first relatively safer lithium-ion battery. Why are lithium-based batteries better? Since lithium is the lightest of all metals, it's perfect for lightweight mobile devices. It also has the greatest electrochemical potential, generating double the voltage of nickel-cadmium and primary alkaline batteries. And the best thing about lithium, no memory effect. It's actually better to recharge the battery before it dies. Today it's the industry standard wherever weight and frequent charging are factors, especially in cars and airplanes. Lithium batteries make up almost half the battery market, but not all batteries are created equal. Sony, the company behind lithium-ion, got hit with the largest computer-related recall in history when some of its laptop batteries exploded and caught fire. Two months ago, a faulty battery grounded the entire Boeing 787 Dreamliner fleet. So excellent design with solid insulation and strict manufacturing processes to reduce contaminants are critical in making a safe battery. So assuming we buy a device from a company that takes battery design seriously, how can we safely get the best performance and lifespan from lithium ion? I boiled it down to two main goals. One, high specific energy, creating longer run times between charges. He means a large capacity. And two, a high cycle count. Again, in plain English, a long lifespan. As with all engineering, companies make trade-offs all the time. Because of the electrochemical nature of batteries, we can't have it all. But we can do business with companies that try to Safe, high-capacity, long-lifespan batteries also have a higher cost. Personally, I would avoid third-party replacement batteries. The faulty battery in Boeing 787 Dreamliner cost them almost half a billion dollars in lost sales so far. Low-budget startups might be tempted to use cheap batteries that have high capacity to get good initial reviews, but then safety and battery lifespan might be sacrificed. The smartphone market today is unique, especially in the US. Many of us are conditioned to a two-year life cycle, so a shorter lifespan isn't a major problem for early adopters. But if you're buying a used phone, definitely factor in the cost of a new battery. Now if you hope to keep it for more than a couple years, let's talk some basic maintenance. First, as I said before, Lithium-ion batteries themselves do not need conditioning. They don't need to be fully discharged and charged repetitively. And they don't need to be plugged into a charger for 7-8 to eight hours after being fully charged. But, if you notice the software battery indicator on the device starts bugging out, try recalibrating by running the device until it goes to sleep and then recharging fully. Second, don't let your battery die completely. If the battery discharges completely, it will be dead. No amount of recharging will bring it back to life. The good news is that most devices will automatically go to sleep long before that ever happens. Third, if you notice the battery is getting unusually warmer than usual, send it in for service. It could be short-circuiting. Fourth, if you notice physical damage, get an authorized replacement ASAP. You probably don't want a phone burning a literal hole in your pocket. Lastly, let's talk overall battery life. Although most packs last three to five years, there are a couple of factors that affect lifespan. For example, running a laptop only off the power grid reduces the life to two years so it might be good to remove the battery during these extended periods of time. Also, 
Heat is bad. Make sure laptops have proper airflow, don't block the vents, and avoid using them on pillows or blankets for too long. And most of all, don't leave a battery in a hot car. A faded battery actually charges faster than a good one, and it's usually time to replace it when the capacity drops to below 80%. In the next episode, let's break down the best ways to charge and store batteries. And here's a shout out to all the latest subscribers. If you like this series, let me know with a thumbs up, and I always appreciate feedback in the comments. Better yet, if you know someone with battery problems, Share this with them on Facebook or Twitter if you think it might help. Talk to you in the next one. Never over.